Cool, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to HCS Pro Talk, your weekly A. Louise sports podcast. This is episode 186 for the week of June 6th, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, on this episode of the show, will Josh buy a new wedding ring? That's who, the question. Who the fuck knows? It has disappeared into the void. It has. My name is Josh, a.k.a. J.K. Fire. This week, I'm joined by the man in the child or Grogu shirt. Almost forgot his actual name there for a second. Will, a.k.a. I, Mr. Mayhem. Will, how are you doing on this Monday evening? Well, I'm tired. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired. Just a little bit. So I accidentally took a nap yesterday, which made me stay up. Accidentally. I mean, just, yeah, sure. And, uh... <laughs> So I stayed up late, and then I had to get up early for work. So I'm running on like three hours, three four hours of actual sleep. That's never fun. I'm doing all, I'm doing all right. Oh, we, how are you? You know, I may have actually lost my wedding ring. That's how I'm doing. Uh, so to give people a heads up, um, this isn't an extravagant wedding ring. Uh, I do cherish it. I do love it. Obviously, um. But I usually take it off sometimes to, like, fidget with it. I use it, like, as a little bit of a fidget toy, I guess you could say. Um, And I swear I had it on Friday evening, but now it's fucking nowhere to be found. Nowhere. And I asked my two-year-old if she took it. She said no. So, obviously, she didn't take it. <laughs> it's in the ice cream jar upstairs. Or you know, I wouldn't you know? be surprised if she just put it someplace fucking stupid. If she did take it, but I literally have no idea where it is. So the funny thing is, is that I remember seeing a while ago, uh, somebody who had created a Halo wedding ring band, or wedding band, wedding ring, and, um. I didn't know if it was legit or not. I just saw it. And I'm like, that looks pretty cool to me because it's, it's, it's not overstated. I guess you could say it doesn't look gaudy. And I literally looked it up and I found the person on Etsy who's selling it. And it does look really good. Uh, we, we looked up the material that it's made out of to compare it to other wedding band materials. And, uh, it's made out of titanium, um, which apparently is pretty good. All things considered. And the price isn't that bad either. So if I, and I, I got confirmation from my lovely wife that if I did actually lose it and I did want to go this route, she gave me the go ahead to go this route. I'm not saying I am, but I can, if I want so, to. So what's, <clears throat> excuse me, what's the time frame? Like how long do you go before you're like, okay, well, the, time. you saw it too. The sale ends in 28 hours. So, so we got <laughs> 27 hours to find this thing. And to find out my ring size, too, because I fucking yeah. forgot. You better zoom over to a store. I should. I should go to Shane Co. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, I need to figure it out. I'm, I'm not happy about losing the ring if I did actually lose it because I, I'm I'm pissed at myself if I did it because it is all my fault if it, if it happened. Um, it's clear that I just wasn't being safe with it. I was just being stupid, but... Who knows? Oh, I, I swear it's got to be around here somewhere in this house. I swear it's got to be in this house somewhere. The question is where? What about the cat? No, she doesn't fuck with things that aren't hers. Okay. Yeah. She might fuck with the couch, but like she ain't, she's not fucking with the ring. Fair enough. And I know the kid wouldn't eat it because she would have choked. So. I mean, you could just. Keep an eye out. <laughs> just, just watch the poops. It's just I, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I hope not. But Will, do you want to know what's coming up on this week's actual episode of the show? Yeah, what do we got? All right, first and foremost, we got. Uh, yes, that's it, Maddie. Yeah. For those who are in the live chat, that yeah, link is correct. Also, Maddie, welcome. Uh, not lurking for too long. Just popped in here right away. But yeah, and and the the person selling it has like rave reviews too. So it's apparently they're like really good to work with. And again, I'm not saying I'm going with it, but it is an option if I wanted to. And I told Will like this would be the ultimate sellout, like piece of Halo anything that I've if I did buy it that would be in it. Uh, I'd be the biggest Halo sellout in the world, and any one of my opinions, like, can't be taken for truth at all. Like, none of it. Because it would just be, dude, you bought a fucking Halo wedding ring, you idiot. You're like, oh, I did. How cool does this look, fuckers? 
<laughs> but it does genuinely look pretty good. See, Matt even agrees. It says pretty dope. It is pretty dope. And that, and I was telling Will too, it's like, if you looked at it from like a normal viewing distance, right? If you're not up close looking at it, you wouldn't know what it is. It would just look like a normal wedding ring. Like it looked normal. But if you got up close to it or if somebody asked about it, be like, oh, that's a really cool design. What is that? Then I could say what it is and, they'll, and then they'll give me the look. And you know the look I'm talking about. They'll give you the look. And you're like, yeah, fuck you too. You didn't say anything before when you couldn't really see it. Uh, man, he says, yeah, I did buy it and I'm better than you for it. <laughs> fuck yeah. On this week's episode of the goddamn show, we have an apology from last episode. I mean, that's me. Will was pointing to me. If you're listening to the audio, it's me. Halo five is sent off into the sunset. Like what I did there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Thanks. Will. <laughs> thank, thank you for that <laughs> chuckle. And then we have our predictions for the Microsoft and Bethesda showcase, which we are going to be doing a live watch along and reaction to. We'll have more details about that later on in the show. What is up, Dave? Welcome our sweet Sagilios to the live show. And you know what I'm talking about, the look. She's got the look. Um, so first up, Will, an apology from me. So last episode, I, Joshua, incorrectly stated that Slasher was the coach of the Call of Duty League team, the LA Thieves. As many have rightfully corrected me, it is in fact J-Cap who is the coach for the LA Thieves, with the player of Slasher being on the bench for the same team. I apologize for this fuck up, and I thank everyone who reached out to let me know. <laughs> and I didn't include this in the show notes, but I do want to say to J-Cap, that was a really fucking stupid decision that you made, if it was you who made it, to bench hook. There we go. I apologize, and I corrected. So J-Cap is a player as well. Right? He used to be. J-Cap used to be a player. Then he retired. Am I thinking... Am I, became a coach. Am I switching him in my brain for like TJ Holly? Is Holly on the team? Yeah, TJ is on the team, yeah. Ah, uh, that's what it is. He's on the roster. He's on the yeah. starting roster. He's the one that replaced uh, the release Hook. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maddie says, I'm not sure if I can forgive you for this. It'll take time. Well, Maddie, you can go fuck yourself too. So there's there's that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Maddie says, damn, we'll throw you under the bus like Jim Carrey did in Dumb and Dumber when uh, Harry threw the salt shaker. Thanks a lot, Will. So it's what he's here for, right? I knew what you were going to say. Um, Dave says, that's this weekend, isn't it? Or am I confused? It is, in fact, this weekend. And again, we'll talk about it again uh, towards the end of the show where we'll re-talk about um, the partnership that we got with Podcast Evolved for this event, too. So it'll be a good time. What is up, Mr. Davey Havoc? Yo, welcome to the live show. So yeah, again, I, I mean this. Everybody that reached out, uh, Discord, Twitter, thank you guys for correcting me on the the Slasher J-Cap debacle. Um, I said it, it was, I was like in the heat of the moment. I didn't, I obviously didn't say it correctly. So thank you for reaching out. Thank you for correcting me on that. And uh, to J-Cap, if it was your decision, I honest to God can't believe it. Like I don't, I don't understand. You know, you're the coach. I'm not. So that explains it. Well, let's get into some competitive news. I have one piece of competitive news. Active commentates over your clips. This is by Active on Twitter. And I quote, anyone have any good clips that they want me to commentate? Fill out the form in the profile of at cast your clips. Follow and see if your clip gets featured. So, hey, up and coming caster Active who is actually one of the casters for the send-off Sentinels event that just took place over the weekend. Great job, by the way, Active. He wants to commentate your clips, so send him his way. At cast your clips on Twitter. And there's that. And Will, that's it for the competitive news! Your upcoming turnips of the week presented by NoobCombo.com! Check out NoobCombo.com for all your Halo Esports needs. But no merch. On Saturday, June 12th, SWAT Nation, calm before the storm. Halo 5, 4v4, so what? Tournaments taking place. And then on Sunday, June 13th, we have the Blue Team Tournaments, Rainbow Road, Halo 2, free for all of fire number two. And the Esports Arena, Halo 5, 4v4. 
Check out all the information over at noobcombo.com. Make sure to check out noobcombo.com for all the Halo Sports needs. And uh, that's it for the upcoming terms of the week. Presented by, we already did it. So, Will, what do we got next? Roster Media! Oh my god! Yeah, we finally got it back. Bear, 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 bear! All right, so I'm going to... We're going to go over the rosters for the send-off for Halo 5. And then Sentinels. Sentinels, yeah. Send-off. And then we'll just roll right into the tournament results to make it all flow a little bit better for the Sentinel send-off tournament. And then we can go over the other community tournaments. Well, do you want to... Well, here's what I'll ask them. Do you want to go over the community tournaments first, then lead into Roster Mania into the other tournament? We already did this. Let's just go. All right. I just wanted to hear the sound bite twice. Uh. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to hear a recap later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, we are. We are, we are baby. Josh is going to press the button. Am uh, I? <gasps> uh, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> never seen someone get so excited over pressing a button. <laughs> We just don't, we don't have the segment that much anymore. We just yeah. don't. So it's like, especially with everything being so up in the air right now. And hopefully, I mean, we're going to know more on Sunday, but like not in terms of a competitive standpoint, but regardless, go ahead. Yeah. So we had four invited teams and four qualified teams. The qualified team included Casey Pioneers, which was Druck, Tolik, Soul Snipe, and Manny. We had Pittsburgh Knights, which was Atto, Tapping, Buttons, Nugget, and Drift. Falling Esports, the Gold Star BR, JK7, uh, Dragon, and is that Exodu? Yeah, I don't know. Exodio? Exodio. Or just Exo? I don't Exo. know. Exo. Exo, do you? And then we had commonly Ryan Noob, Envor, and Super ZC on Flyers. The four invited teams, you might know them Sentinels, Snakebite, Frosty, Lethal, and Royal 2. Envy, Pistola, Saiyan, Trippy, and Spartan. Wait, let's back the train up. Oh, okay. Can you read that Sentinels roster one more time for me? Yeah, Snakebite, Frosty, Lethal, and Royal 2. Who was the third player in that list? Lethal. What game are we playing? H5. Huh. He quit. Halo 5 in 2021. Lethal, who hadn't played in, what, two to two and a half years. Console H5 is back. And then who was on that enemy roster? Uh, Ola himself, the wizard, Saiyan, Trippy, and Spartan. Who was the first player you read there? Uh, Ola. Pistola. I Halo, got your what Pistola. Game, what game were you playing? Uh, Halo 5. In 2021. And Pistola's back. He's back. This tournament hasn't even started yet. What a fantastic... I mean, it's it's over, but like in terms of what we're talking, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we then had Cloud Nine, which included Penguin, Eco, Stellar, and Renegade, and then Inconceivable, Booba Doo, Falcade, Bound, and Sabinator. Holy moly! Maddie said he's like Dee Dee in Dexter's Lab. You know? Yeah, I'm pretty stupid. I'll take that. <laughs> uh, Davy Havoc says lethal. Yes. Everybody was fucking confused. So f- to me, this feels like the infinite squads actually getting together to play H5. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, I think that's exactly what it was. Getting these contracted teams to play. I can agree with that. It makes, it makes total sense because otherwise, why the fuck would he succumb to that? Except APG. What's he doing? Oh, he was only playing in, I mean, what? He was playing in the MC, the the Halo 3 MCC Pro Series for a while, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know what he's doing now, but I know that Frosty replaced him on Sentinels, right? When Frosty came back, isn't that what happened? Oh, yeah. yeah. He didn't, uh, Maddie says, oh. Trippy said he didn't want to play H5, so they subbed in Spartan. Wow. So that's APG on that Envy roster, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for Infinite, yeah. Got it. Yes, I don't know what he's doing now. 
other than him just not wanting to play H5. Understandable. That's why I'm surprised Lethal came back for this event. But All right. Would you like to run through the eventful moments before we get into the placings? Sure. Oh, gladly. Uh, so um, if you didn't watch this event, this was arguably, well, this probably is, more than likely is, okay, let's just say it is, the last major Halo 5 event before Infinite releases. Um, other, obviously, there will be community tournaments that are taking place, but this was like the last big one. since this. I think this is the biggest prize pool in a Halo event since DreamHack Atlanta 2019. I'm pretty sure that this is the biggest one. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Um, so what happened for this event was there were four invited teams that will went through those invited teams would automatically be in the championship bracket, which took place on Sunday on Saturday. There was an open bracket of, I think 32 teams or however many actually ended up competing where the top four would advance to the championship bracket to face off against the top, the four invited teams. The open bracket basically ended exactly the way everybody ex expected it to. Okay. Therefore those four invited teams being Casey pioneers, flyers, Pittsburgh Knights, and falling esports. What I am happy about is that they opened it to Mexico because the Pittsburgh Knights deserve to be there 100%. Um, I was confused as to why they didn't have the opportunity for, um, Australia and New Zealand to compete, but as Will, I think you talked about last week and it was confirmed it had to do with connection. So that's why I just, I would have loved to see, um, I would have loved to see, uh, cartel trying to get in there on the EU side of things, but it is what it is. You also got to think about the time zone difference. If we're playing. Oh, Absolutely. You know, noon here. It's yep. what what time is it for them? Over? It's crazy. No, I remember, it's but, craziness. but it's yeah. It in my mind, I thought I thought it would have been cool to have like a faux world championship again. But it, this is this is perfectly fine. This was great the way it was. So, like I said, open bracket on Saturday kind of went run of the mill as everybody expected. But the thing I really want to point out here is that the Kansas City Pioneers beats. Flyers in the open tournament twice once to send them into losers. And then the flyers fought their way through losers back up into the grand final against, well, the grand final, the open bracket against uh, the Kansas city pioneers where the Kansas city pioneers wiped the floor with them again. Okay. It was a blowout. Both, both series were basically a blowout. All right. They're both best of fives. So championship bracket Sunday. The only team really to focus on right now, the reason why I mentioned Flyers in the open bracket and them getting wiped off the floor with can by the Kansas City Pioneers is because the Flyers went on a fucking rampage. They were knocked into losers fairly early on. Um, I'm going to open up the bracket right now because I am going to find it incredibly funny Give me one second here. I apologize that I'm taking time off uh, this, but let's see. Okay, so Inconceivable 3 owed them to send them in the losers. Round one, okay? They were put down there immediately. So then Flyers, like I said, went on a fucking tear. They face off against the Pittsburgh Knights. First round in the loser's bracket. They beat them 3-2. Okay, so close series, but they move on. Sentinels lost a very close series 3-2 against Team Envy in the winner's bracket to drop Sentinels into the loser's bracket, where they come uh, to play against a Flyers roster who went to a game five with the Pittsburgh Knights. All the casters, basically, I think everybody in chat, everybody thought that Sentinels, this would be an easy win. Nope. Instead, the first thing I want to talk about is Sentinels versus Flyers in the loser's bracket. 
Specifically, it went to it went to five games. Game four, Oddball and Eden commonly literally doing everything to win that game. He had the most ball time for his entire team. I think the most ball time out of anybody in the game. He was staying alive. He was pulling an Ola. And uh, I think, I forgot if it was this game or if it was a different game, but Shyway was talking about how he gave like a Harry Potter reference for commonly. And I'm like, I think it would have been better for Pistola because, you know, the glasses and the hair, but that's besides the point. It worked. He was staying alive when it, it, it just seemed like he was, he would, he shouldn't be able to. It was insane how he wasn't able to be collapsed on. He was consistently laying down damage and shots. Every time they were on his POV, he was laying shots on people and he was still staying alive. And he, and he also remained positive in the entire game. Okay, so that was Oddball on Eden. Game five was Slayer on Plaza. Flyers won it in dominant fashion. Now, I know that there's a lot of contention around ending a series on a Slayer. But, man, it was crazy. Let me, let me go back to that last comment. Is there tension on, on it now, or was it like a thing that flared up for a bit and everyone was like, no, no, no. I think cool. everybody keeps it in the back of their minds. It's like it's like the fucking BR. The battle royale, not the battle rifle. Where you don't hear much you don't hear much about it, and then one person says something and all of it explodes again. Sure. It just feels like floodgates are waiting to be opened again. This is like a contention in the competitive community that's been around since the end of time, or the start of time, I guess you could say. But regardless. Flyers not only won that game five, they reverse swept Sentinels. And they sent them home much earlier than anticipated. Like I said, it felt like everybody had Sentinels easily winning that series. It's like the Flyers just didn't belong. I think it was uh, during the Envy series prior to that, I believe it was Nighty said something to the effect of like, oh, Envy didn't get the memo. Like they weren't supposed to beat Sentinels. Oh, their home, the home team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, jokingly, but yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of a surprise to everyone. It was. And the fact that Flyers beat them in a reverse sweep in the loser's bracket was one of the biggest surprises of the entire tournament. Yes. But the fun didn't stop there. Remember Kansas City Pioneers where they handily beat Flyers twice in the open bracket? Well, let's just say that the reverse happened here. Not a reverse sweep. No. A reverse series. Flyers dominated in a 3-0 sweep, continuing their loser's bracket run. So they get, again, they were mopped on the floor via the Kansas City Pioneers in that open bracket. And then they're like, wait a second, wait a second. We're better than you. Let's prove it. And they goddamn did. So then, whew, Envy went up against Cloud9. They beat Sentinels. They go up against Cloud9 in the winner's final. Cloud9 are, for lack of a better fucking phrase, they're on Cloud9 because they wipe the floor with Envy and they win 3-0. Okay? They are dominant. Renegade doesn't stop playing Halo 5. Their communication must be on point. Their teamwork is on point. They they handily win that series 3-0. So now it's Envy, the return of Ola, going up against the Flyers in the loser's bracket. Well, let's just say that nobody saw this one coming either. Um, and while it was a hard-fought battle, the Flyers come up with another upset, and they win the series 3-2, advancing to the grand finals to take on Cloud9. So this team, this Flyers team, gets knocked into losers in the open bracket, gets destroyed in the grand final. Granted, they made their way up to the grand final, but they got destroyed in the grand final. Gets to the champ bracket, gets knocked down round one, then goes on a streak I haven't seen in so fucking long, taking out world champion Sentinels, the people who destroyed them before the Kansas city pioneers and an unbelievable team in envy to now go up against cloud nine in the grand final. But unfortunately that Cinderella story came to an abrupt end because cloud nine just fucking destroyed them in a three L sweep. But it can't be, it can't be stated enough how crazy of a run that flyers went on because it's not just 
the run that they went on, Will. Ryan Oob was a sub on that team. Yeah, who was he in for again? It was um, Septify. Ryan Oob was a sub. Oh, Septify was their alternate. If I'm not mistaken, I think Ryan Oob was their sub. He jumps in, and that's the run that they fucking go on. I'm it, I'm dumbfounded. That that reminds me, I mean, to put it in, in another relevant kind of stance, that reminds me of version one in Valorant. They come in with a sub, and they go on that run. Granted, they didn't make it to the grand final, but still, I mean, that was a much bigger event. Let's be real. Yeah, no, no one expected them to do what they did. No, and nobody expected Flyers to do what they did. No way. So, Flyers, I know you didn't win it, but damn, you fucking won over a lot of hearts in that in that event. I can promise you that. You guys played incredibly well. And the biggest thing is we talk about we talk about clutch moments, right? And how it doesn't matter necessarily. It really like it doesn't matter necessarily if you're down 2-0 in a series. It's how you come back. And if you're able to come back. And you guys showed over and over and over again in that event that you guys had the will, the integrity, and the fucking balls to come back in the way that you did. Making it all the way to the grand final when everybody, I'm not going to lie, including me, counted you out. I was on the side of Sentinels in that loser's bracket match. But, man, you fucking won me over. That's for damn sure. And that's always been kind of the... The story and dream of Halo is that anyone can make a run through the loser's bracket. Yep. And I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, Lethal hasn't played in God knows how long. But I always say one player doesn't make a team. And Frosty's been playing pretty consistently, I guess you could say. Uh, Snakebite and Royal 2 have been playing not very, not I wouldn't say consistently, but they've, like, they've, they're warmed up. More so than Lethal, obviously. So I thought that they had a fighting chance to make it to the end. In the back of my head, I always thought that cloud nine would make it to the grand final because of renegade consistently playing the game, winning multiple other community held events. And that just goes to show. They just, they flyers played really well. Cloud nine played incredibly well. So will, what do you got? Well, let's run through the final placing. So in seventh and eighth, we had following esports in Pittsburgh Knights taking home seven hundred fifty bucks. Fifth through sixth, taking home fifteen hundred bucks was inconceivable and Sentinels. Fourth, the KC Pioneers taking home three thousand dollars. Third went to Envy, forty five hundred dollars. Second, Flyers six thousand, and first goes to your champions of the Halo Five send off Cloud Nine taking home twelve grand. Like I said, can't can't say it enough. Congratulations, Flyers, on that. I know it was only second place, but man, shut all the fucking doubters up. It was insane. One of the best, one of the best championship Sundays that I've seen in a really long time. Just because of the upsets, man. It was it was exciting. Literally one after another after another. You just yeah. They beat Sentinels, which was like, what the fuck? And then you think, okay, you're going up against Kansas City, who destroyed you before. It may be close, but nah. And then they go up against Envy, and you're like, I mean, it's Ola. And fucking Trippy and Saiyan have been playing for God knows how long. Like, you're not. And and Spartan's been on a tear, too. They're, you're not winning that. You're not winning that. And then they do. It's just... Wow. <laughs> Fucking wow. What a what a tournament. And then also before we move on to the other community events as well, I just want to say uh shout out to Sentinels, shout out to LVT, um shout out to everybody involved, all the casters, all the talent, everybody behind the scenes, the the production crew. I know I said LVT, but like everybody there, uh those who created the stats that showed up on the broadcast. It's just, it was a really well put on show. Um, 
and yeah, I just, it was so, it was just so good. It was so good. It felt like a traditional event. It was, I know it was online, but man, it felt, it felt good. It was so good to watch. So thank you guys for putting that on. And if this is, and it feels like it is the last major Halo 5 event, then I think it was a, a good send off. Great. This is just great. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got, Will? All right. We'll start off or move into the TNT Halo 3 Hardcore 2's draft tourney. Ooh. Seventh and eighth, we had Dog the Legend and Gordy. Fronter Bumper and Forceful. Fronter, I love Fronter Bumper. In fifth and sixth place, uh, Aperture and Cousin and Cutie and Whoopsie. Whoopsie is a good name. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. In fourth place, we had Fantasy and uh, Pro Clutch. Third, taking home 100 bucks was Hybrid is Me and uh, Signifier. Signifier. I'm gonna, I like the first one you gave. Signif- I, I don't know why the fuck there's a weird L in there. Signifler? Signifler? Jesus Christ. Second goes to Blitz and Twitchy, taking home 300 bucks. And first went to Tylenol and Ganked Slays, taking home 600 bucks. Congratulations. And then last but not least, we have the Blue Team Tournament Halo 2 FFA qualifier number one. In eighth place, we had Bionicle DNA. Seventh was Rage. Eighth was... The eighth was Gerwell. Fifth was Give Shot. Works for me. Fourth. Are you freaking kidding me? It's take the kid away. Well, there's no, I, there's, I, I know. Safe. I know. This is my first Are reaction. you freaking me? Are you freaking me? <laughs> does that go on the list? I, I like it. I think it does. Are you freaking me? Congratulations. You, me? you make it on to the best gamer tags of the year list. Definitely we're, we're not almost, the worst. We're almost halfway through the year. We don't have a lot on the list, to no. be honest. The top 10 is going to be easy. I I agree. I'm not complaining. It just get, means other people need to step their fucking yeah, game up. Yeah, get at us. Get, <laughs> who's get got the at best us. gamer tag out there that's going to make us laugh? We have yet to add anyone to the worst team names of the year list. Are you freaking me? <laughs> Are you freaking me? Oh. <laughs> uh. Let's move on. In third place, we had Stoodle Pop. Second was Blizz. And first went to Porky J. Congrats. I forgot, I forgot we had J Banger on the best <laughs> gamer yeah. tags of the year. J Banger. J Banger. That's just a fucking great name. Oh, my God. Let's run through it. Who else we got on there? All right. So the worst game. This is so far. Okay. Almost, okay. Like you said, we're almost midway through the year. Um, Worst gamer tags of the year. So far. We have... Enanog, E N A N O G, Rumgel, oh him, yeah, H R Y M J yeah G E L, Dragon, but not really. Yeah, yeah. That's what I literally say it here is Dragon, <laughs> but not really. And then Rorch, R O R Z C H. Yeah, Rorch. Rorch. The best gamer tags of the year so far. So far, we have as of now. J Banger. J banger. That's solid. Pikachu pot pie. Oh, that one's good. Barbosa's monkey. Yes. And are you freaking me? Pretty good. Worst team names of the year. Nothing yet. And then best team names of the year so far include Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Granny hands. <laughs> Granny hands. Pow right in the kisser. <laughs> yeah. Cat Fox. <laughs> in the, I still love that one because if you say it, Nobody's going to understand why that's one of the best gamer, one of the best team names of the year. But if you spell it out, that's why. And then you have Dave's adopted son and machine gun lobsters. <laughs> all right. All right. So those are, those are what we got right now on the list. Uh, Dave says, shout out to the casters of that, the blue team tournaments. Um, and then he says, are you patting yourself on the back, Dave? Dave says, absolutely. Did Dave commentate? I guess so. Shout out to Dave. Uh, Maddie says, someone, someone in Anthony's uh, clips with the gamer tag Super Slayin'. I thought that was pretty good. If they didn't compete, we can't say it. We can't just add something willy fucking nilly, Maddie. Willy fucking nilly, Maddie. If we have a D- Dave's adopted son on there, you have to have Dave's immediate family on there. Wait, is that, was that the other name of it? Yeah. Yes, we do. We do. We do. Dave's immediate family. I agree. I, rem- I thought there was a second team name. I couldn't find it. 
Dave, why didn't I know you were casting the last four it. weekends? That's crazy. Leave your family alone. <laughs> <laughs> your real name's not even fucking Dave. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for Christ's sake. Also, uh, was this, Dave, was this last one streamed? Because I looked on the Blue Team TO's Twitch channel and I didn't see it there. They didn't share it on social media. What the fuck? Yesterday's wasn't. I, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. think so. I okay. tried looking for the VOD and I couldn't find it. So I'm just making sure. Got it. Yeah, that that's the list so far. So yeah, Dave's immediate family have has been added to best team names of the year. And then are you freaking me? Has been added to the best gamer tag. Excuse me, of the year. So there's that. Um, the grand finals, none of the players are streaming. Well, the fuck them. It was, but no grand final. Why? Why the fuck not? And all right. Will, is that it for the tournament league recaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get to our topic. First off, we have an announcement reminder. The podcast evolved in HTS Pro Talk E3 watch along stream extravaganza bonanza. <laughs> I, inclu- I put the whole thing there. All right. Oren, or Tetra, of Podcast Evolved will be joining us for the HTS Pro Talk E3 Watch Along. We'll also be on the Podcast Evolved Blue Team stream to discuss what we saw with members of the Podcast Evolved crew, including Aaron and David. We hope to see you there for some shenanigans. So, on June 13th, which is Sunday, 2021, at 11.30 a.m. Central Time, be here, twitch.tv forward slash HCS Pro Talk, and you can catch us with Orn and Discord. And we'll have a little pre show event leading into the big thing, and we'll talk over it. We'll watch some Halo shit because it's going to be there, and you, you'll, you'll, we'll scream. It'll be a good time. Um, and then later on, Will, I hope you're able to make it, but I understand if you're not. Uh, at 4 p.m. Central Time, we're going to be on a post-conference live show in their Discord, the Podcast Evolved Discord, and we're going to be part of the Blue Team stream. So again, that's 4 p.m. Central in the Podcast Evolved Discord server. And yeah, that'll be a post-conference show. We're going to talk with members of the Podcast Evolved crew on what we saw, what we liked, what we disliked, uh, what we can look forward to in the future, I guess you could say. So there is that. And then also, if you tune in, to the stream at twitch.tv forward slash HTS Pro Talk. You can join us for a, an incredible round of Dave's bingo, where he created bingo cards. And I don't think the, the boards are finished yet, but I imagine they will be soon, Dave. But, Dave, when it's ready to go, let us know. And you guys can play along with us and uh, see who gets a bingo. So Dave, the question is, are they all going to be the same card? Or are you going to flip? Or are you going to put pieces in different places? Is Bingo how Justin? Because we still owe Justin a copy of Infinite. Yes. Is that how we won it? Was through Bingo? I how did we? No, I thought we drew. We did a drawing. We did I think. a drawing. Yeah, but yes, I do. Rem- yeah, I do know that he is owed a copy of the game. So, uh, Justin, I just need to know PC or Xbox. I know you got the Series X, so I'm imagining it's Xbox. But my, you just let me know. Yeah, yeah. We'll, um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. The slots aren't uh, same cards. Okay. The board is finished. Hell yeah. Also, what's up, Justin? Welcome to the live show. Bebop won the bingo cards. Yes, he did. That's true. Yes, he did. We did a copy of MCC for that. Yes, we did. That's what we did. Yes, we did. Ah. So, Will, the weekly topic for us here, for those in the chat... Uh, everyone get bingo, wouldn't they? Maddie, it's just for fun, you fuck. All right? Calm down. It's just for funsies. This is just for shiggles. So cool your tittles. So, the weekly topic this week, Will, for us in the chat, for those who want to reply in the Discord and tweets, whatever you want to do. Predictions for the main event. Are we getting a battle royale, Will? No. Are we getting multiplayer footage, Will? I would say yeah. All right. 
That's it for the show. We'll see you next week. So are we getting a release date, a release date and or a beta date or insider date? Okay. Flighting date, whatever the frick you want to call it. So that's the question, right? Do we get, so speculation is running rampant right now in the community. Okay. I was a firm believer and I have to stick to it because it's not shown yet, but I was a firm believer that, with, and I talked about it last week with these types of events, you don't get multiplayer footage for a game that has a single player campaign, especially to the breadth of halo. So I have to stay on my horse that we're not going to see multiplayer footage, even though that, that graphic makes it really appear like we're going to. Um, so if we do, I will eat my words live. Will can create a piece of paper with my words on it and I will chew on it. I won't swallow it, but I'll chew. Okay. To counter that, I was going to do something as well. Oh, to counter it? What? I was going to say, if we do get a beta announced, oh, like sure. a date, I was going to shave my beard on stream. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You guys heard it. I got to do it now. Can I shave like a stripe down your head? No, not <laughs> just <laughs> the beard. Be, I want to make you like, beard. I want to make you like fake Aang. <laughs> Except you'll have hair. Like you'll have hair. It'll just be the one the, line the that you don't arrow have. Yeah, the arrow the will hair. just be shaved. <sighs> no. Oh man. Um. Let's see. Is release date something we should add to the card? Yeah. Yeah. I thought. I thought that was a given. To be honest, I, I really thought it was a given that we get a release date. I can't shave the little beard. Is that what you're saying? Why not, Dave? It's got to be. Damn, Maddie, I want to win. Damn it. <laughs> Okay, Maddie, which one do you guys want? It's a community event. Leave me alone. Maddie's like, I hate community events. It's a crime to shave the beard. And he says, actually, shout out to Maddie Rums. Only one to stay for our Halo 2 only community play date. Well, maybe there's a reason why people didn't show up because it was Halo 2 only, you fuck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So um, anyway, back to the conference. Yes. So I do. Man, I hate being wrong on this shit. And I know it doesn't matter, but like, I just hate being wrong on it. But, uh, okay, it was delayed a full year. I feel like we have to get a release date this event. I do. I feel like we really do. I, it'll be shown at the end of the trailer. Uh, the person from 343 will come out on the stage. It'll be like, that's right. Halo Infinite is releasing on the Xbox family of consoles and PC on this date. Pre-orders are live right now. You probably won't say, he or she won't say that part, but they'll be live immediately following the release date announcement. Do we get, fuck, do we get a multiplayer flight date announcement? They said that they had still wanted to test it. Yes, and they said that they're coming. And I joked in Discord and said, like, when the person comes out on stage, you're going to want to make sure you have your insider profile updated. Yeah. You know, um, be, they don't call it a beta. They don't, but that's so weird to me. Why? Because if you're trying to explain it to people, but it's not finished, right? Well, I mean, it's betas worked. aren't supposed to be finished either, even though they're, they're, they're really representations of the final game. Exactly. So they're changing the, yeah, four months to November would be the, so four months of the release window. Is that enough time yes. to get an insider program out and tested with feedback? Because that's what the insider program is so supposed here's, to be. Right. So here's my, here's my answer to that question. Yes, but there's an asterisk I'm adding to this. Yes. The asterisk is, is that it worked for MCC to a degree where MCC on PC had their flight, what, uh, f a few weeks before yeah. that title released on PC? Granted, you, we've had multiple instances of the title not releasing in the greatest state, but there, from what they were talking about, feedback was taken into consideration, and some of it was addressed before it released on that platform. So the question is, like I said, I'm going to say yes with an asterisk because I don't know what could be done in that time frame. 
now we get into that whole conversation about the slip space engine and how they keep talking, they keep touting in market speech that this is the, it's, it'll allow us to do things so much quicker and iterate things so much faster. So I don't, I don't know. Um, Dave says guilty gear strive has been doing it since February. Maddie says that they don't have a release date this close to it being a full year since delayed. That'll set off a ton of red flags. Agreed. And uh, Maddie, that's why I think we have to have a release date. This event. What did I say last time that I said they have to have something and they didn't do it? Like I said, I hate being wrong because I felt like maybe I said, I thought we were getting a release date there, but we didn't. Well, we knew it was supposed to release with the console. Correct. You're right. You're right. So we already had, we had that there. Okay. You're right. So it gets delayed a full year. I, we have to have a release date. We have to. So Dave made a good point. I want a collector's edition in all caps. I do too. Do we get an announcement on that? Or do they wait? I'm trying to remember what they've done for other releases and whether or not they announce it there, like during this presser. Because I can't remember. Add to the card, add it to the card. Maddie and Dave will, if you remember as well, for previous Microsoft pressers, for Halo titles, obviously, have they announced the collector's edition that same time? So Halo 3 would have been one, Halo Reach would have been one, and Halo 5 would have been one. Because 4 didn't have a collector, I mean, it had a collector's, a limited edition, but nothing, nothing extravagant. They had the console. I honestly don't recall. Dave says game comes out this month, I believe. You're talking about oh guilty gear strive, I imagine. I think I think you're right on that. Two, four, and five all did. I don't know if they showed it during E3. Dave, did they show it during E3? That's what I want to know. Did they show the collector's editions in the press events during the Microsoft E3 press conferences for Halo 3, 4, and 5? I mean, Halo 3, yeah, fuck it, 3, 4, and 5. E3, no. Okay. Shit. Then I don't know, man. I don't know. Because this isn't, this isn't like a, this isn't like a Square Enix Final Fantasy 14 event where it's just that Mm. game that they're focused on. So it does say for Halo 5, 343 Industries announced shortly after E3. Okay, so be after. Okay. But this isn't necessarily an e3 event right this this is different this is slightly different okay i'm gonna go out on the limb and say that they don't i'm going to hope that they do fair enough i'm gonna say definitively release date yes collector's edition announcement reveal whatever no although i really want it because I think that would be a crazy cool thing to include to be like, and we know, we know our collectors out there are really excited to see what we have in store for this legendary edition. So we're proud to announce or for this game. So we're proud to announce the legendary edition of Halo Infinite. It comes with all these goodies. Whether or not they say you can pre-order right now, that's the question. But I would love if they had something like that. What's up, Eric? Welcome. Well, you'd think if there was a Legendary Edition, they had it a year ago. Or half a year ago. Right. So right? it's got to be ready to go. Or ready to reveal, at least. Unless they drastically change something. I don't fucking know. Well, I don't think they changed the core story of the game. You get they- a geometrical piece of the ring that people hated so much from the reveal. <laughs> You get that hexagonal piece of the ring. You get uh, another chief helmet, but it has the hexagon uh, shield regeneration. Yo, Eric with the gifted sub to Maddie Rums. Thank you so much, Eric. Maddie, make sure you thank Eric for that. There it is for the sub. And uh, Eric, technically for Maddie, but I'm going to say, Eric, you get a woo. Thank you very (laughs) much, man. Greatly appreciated. Um. So Dave says, wait, I think Halo 3 did actually. 
because of the helmet, it had a long pre-order window. Maddie says, I consider it an E3 event. Phil Spencer said that they'd be taking place in E3, so t- uh, taking part in E3, so yeah. But it's not like, I don't know. It, t- t- this is going to sound stupid, and not to go like completely against you, Will, but if if there was to be an E3 press conference, this feels, this Microsoft Bethesda one, seems like the only real one well, UB Forward, Ubisoft Forward is happening, so that'll be like an E3 press conference. Square Enix, I know, is doing an event. And um fuck, what's the what's the other one that I was thinking of? There's another one that I was thinking of too. Devolver Digital's doing one too again. I'm fucking stoked. I'm fucking stoked. Um PC game showcase. Yeah, but the PC game show is fucking three hours long of just absolute shit. That was really mean. Okay, I didn't really mean that. It's not absolute shit, but man, and I love Day 9. I really do. But man, sitting through three hours of that is not the most fun thing in the world. Um, Maddie says Nintendo Treehouse is a thing too. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And they did say another thing. I wanted to include this in here, but I didn't. Um, The Nintendo Treehouse Live is 40 minutes of gameplay only. They are not going to be talking about new hardware at all and i can trust them because every they try to set expectations as early on as possible because they don't want you getting the wrong fucking idea because speculation again runs wild and this whole new switch pro model is crazy so i mean i i I think it's gonna happen and obviously all these reports are coming out saying that it's going to but like so nintendo getting out ahead of it saying we're focusing 40 minutes Gameplay itself, no hardware announcements. I'll take them for their word. Um, let's see. It's because Devolver Digital steals the fucking show. They really do. They're fantastic. Isn't that statue supposed to be part of the Legendary Edition, but now you can buy it separate? Uh, this one? No. They, they are selling this separately. This is a Dark Horse statue that you can purchase... Um, the retailer that we could purchase from is Best Buy. I don't know if it's able to be purchased at other retailers in different countries. But, uh, yeah, Best Buy was the United States retailer for this. Um, and, again, I believe it's a Dark Horse statue, if I'm not mistaken. Maddie says, here's the big question. Do we see Chief make his debut in Smash Bros? Well, what are your thoughts? I've been talking a lot. I'm sorry. What are your thoughts? Oh, it's fine. I don't know. You kind of laid it all, all out there. Um, what do you want to see? What do you, what would make this? We've been in such a rut lately with, with this shit. What would make you excited? Okay. Improved colors, improved shadows, improved. That blob of fucking <laughs> what we saw. Yeah. Um, I would like to at least see some multiplayer. They... So they got to give us something at this point. I'm not expecting a insider programmer or whatever. It'd be cool if we got it, but I'm not expecting it at this point, which scares me. I'm going to let you finish because I have something to reply with for something that you said many, many months ago. Okay. Okay. We're going to make the, things come full circle. The thing that is kind of like, maybe tipping the scale for me towards there possibly being a beta release is the fact that Sentinels, who have been honestly the first team who picked up an infinite team. They did. They picked up first the Horde Tox roster. Who picked up Tox, yes. Makes me think that they have some information because they would know when events would be starting to be planned. These orgs have been roped in. They know. Yes. yes. Uh, this is why the players are coming out of the woodwork. We saw Ola for the first time in who knows how long. Makes me think that there's something on the verge here where we might get the announcement for the beta. I'm just gonna call it a beta because that's what it's always been. Right. That's what that's what normal like that's what normal consumers will Identif- understand. Yeah. Yep. So makes me think that they know there's a beta coming. It's just the question, is it announced at this event or shortly after, or maybe just a little bit after? I think it's on the horizon. Okay. That's so yeah. What did I say a couple months ago that I don't probably remember? So what if we don't get 
multiplayer footage at all. That graphic that we saw yeah. had customizable Spartans with what appeared to be coatings. weapon coatings. Yeah. All leading towards multiplayer, right? Makes you speculate towards multiplayer. Reach levels of customization. Yeah. Right? Yep. Will, remember when you said months ago how you wanted to create your own Spartan in campaign? Yep. What do we know that Halo Infinite has that Halo 5 did not have? Split screen? Yep. I'm not saying we see split screen. I think that'd be stupid. Yeah. But this is the biggest speculation and probably the dumbest speculation I probably ever had. But I'm just I'm just saying this as like a counterpoint to the multiplayer thing. What if instead of seeing multiplayer gameplay, we saw customizable Spartans in campaign so you could play as your own Master Chief? No, not happening. I agree. It's not. But... Like I said, it was only stated because everyone's saying multiplayer. And I'm th- and I thought about it. And I'm like, oh my God. When we first started speculating about Halo Infinite, one of the things you talked about was it doesn't even necessarily need to be a Spartan, but like your own customized Marine ODST or Spartan that goes into the world and completes, like it just, it goes through the story or completes missions, so on and so forth. And you get to see, and you get to carry that person throughout. And they always talked about reach levels of customization. I'm like, how funny would that fucking be if we're able to bring whatever you want yeah. in there? I mean, they could, I mean, maybe 343 can look into a uh, Halo RPG where you're your own Spartan, get put on a random squad. There you go. And uh, kind of like, kind of like reach. Halo Infinite is now an MMO. <laughs> there it is. You get to create your own custom Spartan in an ever evolving world. Jesus so, Christ. Maddie asked, if we see co-op campaign, does that count as multiplayer? Or we just we're probably just talking strictly online multiplayer. Ooh. Ooh. If multi if just multiplayer is on the bingo card. I think it has to be online. I think it needs to be a multiplayer the arena. match. Yes. In the arena. On a multiplayer map to be considered multiplayer. Because that's what everybody, because everybody says co-op is co-op, multiplayer is multiplayer, right? That's that's like the, the differentiator between the two. That's what people say. Yeah. But I would think it'd be funny because in Halo 5, during the presser for that, when they first showed off gameplay for that, they they showed how you're able to control your squad mates and point them in a direction, focus fire on an enemy, pick you up if you're downed, whatever it may be, right? Based going what off Maddie said, what if they actually do a co-op campaign session showing off that, hey, we added it. But then again, it'd be couch co-op, and I don't think that that go well in a presser. But that's that's interesting because you're talking that was Halo 5, right? Halo 5, they showed so, off the squad features because it was new. And we played through we played through Halo 5, 5's campaign with a full squad, didn't we? Me yes. You, Justin, so. and was, there, was it just me and you and Justin? I forgot. It was a long time ago. I forgot. Yeah. Stay but tuned yeah, for Halo Thon 3.0, though. <laughs> I didn't know we could, I didn't know that we could control the other squad mates. Yep. Because I never played solo. It's I with play, the I D-pad. Played with you guys. Yeah, I think it's the D-pad that you select who you want them to go after, but... um. Dave says, honestly, that'd be cool to see, Maddie. Uh, I'm in. Raids would be crazy in the Halo universe. There you go. Maddie says, just getting clarification. Um, also, Maddie says, Reach's Legendary Edition was announced in April 2010. E3 was in June 2010. So I think it's safe to say they were never announced at E3. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I don't think it will happen for an announcement on that, but I would really like it if there was. That'd be That's like a pie in the sky thing for me that holy shit that'd be really cool if they went over the top and they added that too. Also, I want to I want to just preface this entire conversation. I know this is really late into it, but I want to preface this entire conversation with stating that um I am very biased here. 
I think no matter what they show, I will be happy. Again, no matter what. Campaign, multiplayer, yes, it will. like Maddie said, there will be massive red flags that they don't have a release date, but I will be happy with whatever they show. Will I still critique what they show? Absolutely, because we're there to watch it and react to it, and I'm going to critique it, but See, I will probably enjoy it regardless. For me, when we got the first look at Infinite, yeah, I was over the moon about it. Yep, because like, we finally the, saw the yeah, fucking thing. In, in the moment, I was like over the moon about it, but then going back and analyzing, looking at it deeper, noticing the graph, the things with the graphics, Craig the, colors, the Brute. Craig the Brute. <laughs> Yes, um, noticing all those things, like you're like, oh, okay, but yeah, it's Halo. We're gonna be excited, no matter what. Justin says, "I feel like going free to play. They're going to show multiplayer gameplay. It's a massive money maker potential." Justin, you make a great point. Yeah, an absolutely great point. So now let's lean into the multiplayer aspect, right? We see the graphic, right? We have what appears to be, again, this quote-unquote reach level of customization to the Spartans that are in this picture. You have the Emil helmet. Excuse me. You have what looked to be like a red banished type weapon coating on the weapons. Excuse me, Jesus. Um, you have different flavors of Spartan in, and there's four of them, if I'm not mistaken, in that graphic, right? So let's lean into the multiplayer aspect if we're getting a multiplayer reveal. Justin says, going free to play, they're going to show multiplayer gameplay. Is it traditional 4v4? Is it this supposed revamped BTB that they've been working on? Or, I want to, no, fuck it, just those two. Is it, is it one of those two? I don't want to see Warzone, fuck that. Just a, from a personal standpoint. If it is BTB. This revamped, reimagined. I don't know what I the mean, fuck they're doing. That would give you the best opportunity to show off different armors, yes. different skins, yes. different vehicle skins. If there are vehicle skins. There are. They, there are I, they I believe they confirmed that there are. And I think they even showed them off in a Inside Infinite blog post. So, Perfect. Yes. So there you go. That would give them the best chance to show that off. We could also get like multiplayer menus of selecting different armor coatings for different pieces or different weapons. Finally getting a, a more in-depth look to the UI. Yeah. And by in-depth, I mean for a press event as much as they can show to keep things fluid. I'd be down for that because one of the big questions that we've, that we had after the first reveal is like, what are these icons mean? How is the customization going to be in menus? Like, so I agree. Mm -hmm. Uh, Justin says, it's BTB 2.0. That's what I think. Uh, Dave says, I want to see Blood Gulch again. Dave, no. Uh, Maddie says, I think the other thing to think about is time. The whole press conference is 90 minutes. So how much infinite can they show us and still get in whatever else they have planned to show? Do you think it's a 50-50 split? No, absolutely not. An hour, then 30? An hour of what? Of Microsoft, Halo, and then 30 minutes of Bethesda? So we're saying like Microsoft with Halo in there total is an hour. Yeah. And then Bethesda has is a half hour. I could see that, but I but I also see because you we need to keep in mind here that yes, while E3 is different this year, it's 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 all digital, it's all weird, wacky. We need to keep in mind that Microsoft needs to sell other games too. Yes, Halo is their biggest one, which will get the most screen time, obviously, but they need to sell other games too. They need to show what all these teams that they bought are working on or give sneak peeks or just info, whatever. So I agree. Our Microsoft and Halo, half hour Bethesda, because we know fucking, we'll probably see Starfield. Hopefully that'd be amazing. We know Elder Scrolls 6 is way far out. What the fuck else are they working on? So there's that. But I'm looking back at this recent PlayStation state of play that they did. 
where it was, I think, 15 or so minutes of just Horizon Forbidden West gameplay. That's all it was. I think it was 15 minutes dedicated to just that. So, um, guys, we need to ask a serious question here. Bethesda side, Elder Scrolls 7? It's Elder Scrolls 6, if I'm not mistaken. And like I said, it's not coming and for a long time is what they said. So Starfield is what would be shown if they were to show off their next big thing. Um, Maddie says, I lied. 90 minutes is a rumor. Maddie, you did not lie. 90 minutes is not a rumor. They have confirmed it. The reason why I know that um, is because in, I, it may have even been last episode, I think we included it in the show notes and it came from the Xbox Newswire website. I am pretty damn sure it is confirmed that it's 90 minutes. Um, I'm scrolling down to find it real quick. 185. Give me one second. Apologize for the delay. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I think it's in news that we put it. Here we go. Um, you've told us how exciting you are, how excited you are Welk about welcoming Bethesda into the Xbox family. So we know you're going to want a front row seat to the Xbox and Bethesda game showcase, a 90 minute show packed with everything you want to know about the Epic gaming lineup coming out of this partnership, the incredible games coming to Xbox hall, uh, coming to Xbox this holiday, upcoming releases on the Xbox game pass and more. So yes, that was from Aaron Greenberg, the general manager of Xbox games marketing on news.xbox.com. So yes, you were 100% correct in your statement. So th that's that's what I'm getting at. Do is it 15 minutes or is it more? Like this is more than likely this has to be their biggest money maker for the year because I don't think Starfield comes out this year. I really don't. Starfield's at least a 2022 game, maybe 2023 or later. So this is it. Like, and we know it's coming this year. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But here's the other question, right? Do they open with it? They did before. So do you do it now or do you close with it? Do they do the whole stay tuned up like uh coming up soon, Halo Infinite? And you just do, you just keep showing that the bottom bar as it slides across and then they finally see it at the end. Is that what it is? Then when do we just get a trailer? Like, or is, or do you end with a longer gameplay presentation of the game? Do you open or close with that? I think they open. You think they open? Yeah. I was blown away. That they opened last year. Yeah, because... When you saw the intro, it didn't necessarily seem like that's what it was. It didn't scream Halo right off no. the bat. And then you see the armor piece, and you're like, oh, shit. And then the music, the subtle music kicks, and you're like, oh, shit. Oh, that was good. Mm -hmm. That was really good. So, uh, Maddie says, it would depend what else they have to show, in my opinion. I agree. Because my, my big question, because you said, like, what if it's an hour of Microsoft and Halo and then a half hour of Bethesda. So do you, do you quote unquote separate the two or do you intermingle things? Or do you have like in between the Xbox segment, you have a block of Bethesda where Todd Howard comes out and shoots his shit. It's tough. Because I feel like you can't end on that unless, unless, because I get it. Bethesda is now an Xbox game studio. It is. They are owned by Microsoft it's and all Xbox. Xbox. Correct. So realistically, Bethesda is now a first party publisher. I mean, a first party developer, right? So you could end on that. It's your studio. Do whatever the fuck you want. But Halo is your moneymaker. Although Starfield could be the next coming of Christ. I think no matter what they do, we're going to get like a like ending recap video of what we saw. Yeah. So wh whether you end on Bethesda doesn't necessarily mean you 
that's the last impression. There could still be a trailer of all these different yeah, games, you, yeah, and I, then Halo wraps it up, wraps up the ending trailer. You get too. the montage at the end. Yeah, every time. True. Um, from what I read, it said that there will be a delineation between the two. Okay. So okay, so it's either okay because they they definitely can't open with Bethesda because Phil Spencer has to start. So they don't open with Bethesda. We're going to talk about Halo. Not, I mean, we're we're talking about the whole thing, but <sighs> yeah, release okay. date, yes or no? I want a definitive answer. Release date, yes or no? No. Really? Wow. Fuck. Well, I hope you're wrong. I really do hope I you're hope wrong. I hope I'm wrong too, but I'm going no. Oh, no, man. Fuck. Okay. So I'm a yes on release date. You're a no on release date. Collector's edition. No. I'm agree. I agree. I don't think we get it here. Campaign and multiplayer? We're talking video shown. I'm talking about what they decide to show. Yes. Both. Yes. Okay. I know you're leaning towards yes. I would love it. Like I said, I'm going to be happy with anything, but that'd be crazy cool if they did both. But that gets me a whole back to how much time are you spending on this? Because Horizon, again, the PlayStation State of Play, Horizon Forbidden West is a purely single player experience. So you don't have to focus, you don't have to worry about anything else. But you don't realize how much or how fast it goes until you're watching it. Like th- that 15 minutes felt like it went by pretty quick. And in a 90 minute presser where you have to include Bethesda in there too, and who knows what they're oh, going to okay. show. How, how, how many other games can, are going to really going to be shown here where you could probably spend 30 minutes on Halo, which is plenty of time for a campaign and, and multiplayer. Even if we just see a little bit of 4v4 and BTB action. But I need my TV and sports, Will. <laughs> um, all jokes aside. Okay, I hear you, and while I'd love it to happen, I just think that's too long. I'm just, okay, so I'm thinking. I think we do get like 15 (sighs) minutes, maybe 20 minutes on Halo. Okay, but what do they show in that 15 to 20 minutes? They don't need to re-show the whole campaign mission that we saw before. And I don't think we see the same thing. Like, I, I, I think it'd be good... Okay, this is where I'm torn, right? Last year we saw the campaign. There was a lot of, like we talked, like you just mentioned at the beginning, it's like, holy shit, this is so fucking cool. And then you go look further and you're like, oh shit, that's not as cool, right? Yeah. And the community, there was a big backlash in the community. Was that the overarching reaction? Or was it just the subset of the community that reacted that way? Because for the overarching consumer, right? If I were them, 343, I wouldn't show the same thing I just showed. To show off what we fixed, I wouldn't do that. I'd want to see something new. Whether it be a different portion of the campaign, an actual mission, because they just showed you running through the open world. You didn't see a mission. Yeah. So do you see an actual part of the mission with more dialogue, more cutscenes, Or do you focus strictly on the multiplayer aspect? Do you have a narrative-driven story portion and then a trailer including multiplayer footage in that? That's what my feeling was more towards, was more of a trailer-esque type thing for multiplayer, not like a dive into multiplayer. And then at the end of that trailer is the release date. No. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know you're on no on that. I still get all like, I'm still getting like holiday 2021 vibes. No official release and I date. I fucking hate that. Because I don't, I don't disagree with you. I could see it happening. But like Maddie said... 
And now Justin's saying no release date because they want to gauge the community's reaction before deciding when it comes out. But here's my, okay, Justin, I disagree with that reasoning as to why there's no release date. Because to me, it's not about the community's reaction. It's about shareholders and needing to meet deadlines to make money. So I don't think, but that's where the flighting comes into consideration in terms of taking communities feedback further. Because I think there, I feel is the, if this game is half a year out, right? Mm-hmm. Four or five months, whatever it is. If this game comes out in November or December for that matter, and they have to worry about taking community feedback into consideration before picking a release date. That's even more red flags to me. Because at this point you brought, you bought Staten back in or Staten, whatever you bring him back. You add other members to the team. I imagine, I think you're outsourcing some things, whatever it may be, but you've had a full year additional to work on this. If you don't have something solidified, at this point, I don't, and this is your marquee franchise. I don't, that seems really bad to me. But I'm just fucking torn. Do they show a campaign match on this or not? My, you, 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 you kind of had a conflicting, you said campaign match. Do you mean multiplayer? No, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Multiplayer match. Because my my brain being so accustomed to these types of events screams no. But they need to show off the free-to-play multiplayer they stuff. They do, and I agree with Justin on that too. I do. I agree with that. Even if you look at it from a shareholder's perspective, it's this is going to make us money. It'll, it'll make a lot of money. because And also, like, I get it from the microtransactional standpoint that this would make you a lot of money. The all, the other thing too to consider is that this game is releasing day and date on Game Pass too, mm-hmm. which could help drive the sales of that from a campaign standpoint. Because I know, I know the potential for player base because of the free to play multiplayer. The ceiling is so high. I understand that, but I also don't want to alienate those who literally strictly play the game because of the campaign and they never touch multiplayer because there is a subset of people. I don't know how large, but there is a subset of people out there who do that. But, it, but like you, you're mentioning that ceiling for potential player base revenue, whatever it may be being a free to play multiplayer experience is huge. I'm sorry. I feel like I didn't come prepared enough for this because I wanted to have concrete answers for myself, but the more and more I talk about it and I listen to your guys' thoughts, we're, we're just in a gray area. We are. What? There's nothing else. It's, we, we don't know. We've been left with nothing other than what we saw before and no real update. We're only dr- uh, driving these kind of suspicions off of little hints we may have picked up from here or there. Right, based off a graphic. Based off a graphic, <laughs> based off a tweet, a blog post, whatever it may be. Right. We don't know. We won't know. Until Sunday. Until Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Where kids' seats are still free. Because... It's all free. It's all free. Yeah. We're on Twitch. <laughs> Man. Okay. I'm going to put a stamp on this. Yes, a release date. This is me. Okay. Yes, for a release date. No on collector's edition. That'll come in a separate, like, Xbox Newswire post. Yeah. Or the Inside Infinite post. Whatever. Whatever. But it'll come in a it'll come in a blog post of some kind. So release date, yes. Collector's edition, no. Announcement or reveal. A narrative driven 
this is sounds stupid. A narrative driven free form campaign mission or side mission, whatever. If you don't want to reveal too much about the game itself or the campaign itself that leads into a full trailer for the game that includes multiplayer footage and at the end has a release date. I do not think that we get a multiplayer match gameplay in this event. I have to stick with what I said a long time ago. (laughs) I have to. I don't think we necessarily get a match gameplay, but we get some sort of trailer or something showed off for multiplayer. Okay. Like, which doesn't have to show us actual gameplay, but it's going to be, it's got to be in like the trailer. Yes. Some, something, something. It'll be flash a, it'll be a mod. Flash codings. Flash. <laughs> Free to play. Free to play. Game pass. Bitch. That, that's, that's what I think. Maddie says, I agree with Will. We'll see gameplay footage of multiplayer. Right, but in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. In the trailer, not a full-blown match. Yeah. And you think no release date. I think they keep us guessing. Fuck, I don't want to guess anymore. I want to I want a release date so I can take my motherfucking time off work. That's what I want. <laughs> I want to see the release date and then come that same day immediately when that happens, I send an email to my manager being like, here it is. I need this time off, please. That's what I want. That's what I want. Well, it's been a long time. It'll be basically a year, almost a year because it was in July. I think is when we saw the, the gameplay reveal. Are you excited? Oh yeah. Okay. How can you not be? I know. I know, man. It's the best time of the year. It's the most wonderful time of June. Um, cool. I think we hit on everything. I, I'll just, you know what? One final question, okay. not okay. Halo. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. One final question, not Halo related. Is okay. there anything else, anything at all over the entire E3 week you could say that you're excited for any one thing i don't know i mean if we get a lot some of different shit so if we get some uh i mean honestly i'm just looking for god of war ragnarok info but apparently that's been delayed in 2022 correct it was and, and that came in a blog post too yeah <laughs> that came that came in an ama well, not an AMA, but it came in like a it came in a Q and A with uh, the president, I think of of PlayStation or something like that. But like, yeah, it was just like nonchalantly thrown in there. Right. It wasn't any like big announcement. It was just yeah. And then Corey Balrog, who is the director of uh, in at Santa Monica Studio, who's working on God of War Ragnarok, he he said later on like, hey, if you're gonna because people were throwing a lot of hate their way, and he said. If anybody's going to be mad at anyone, be mad at me because it was my decision. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck yeah. Well, hey, don't be mad at him. People fucking are assholes. Like, Corey, you and the team do what you need to do. We'll wait. To everybody else who's being an asshole out there, fuck you. I'll say it, but Corey won't. But I'll say it. Fuck you. With that game, I mean, you have a game that was game of the year. Oh, it's phenomenal. It was amazing. To follow that up, the pressure's got to be high. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a That is a once in a... This might be saying a lot, but I truly believe it. This might that might be a once in a generation type game. And I'm not even just talking about console generation, but like that that game was phenomenal from start to finish. You you it did it did things you had no idea were gonna work, especially in a God of War game. You took Kratos, who is a mad, like fucking just horny ass <laughs> dude who's angry at everything and you make him into a genuinely likable and deep and thought provoking character. 
And then you you put on a you also had a fucking mechanic that game other games have tried and failed miserably to do in like a um like a, a glorified escort mission where you have your kid with you the entire time. But it flips everything on its head because the kid's competent and he's a well thought out character. And yeah, he's a little bratty at times. He's a kid. It's just, and everything combines together to make such a, an incredible experience. That game is, that game is special. Unlike so many other things out there. And man, I, you first see that and you're like, how the fuck's that going to work? He has an ax. Like where, <laughs> where's his fucking, where's a, his blades of chaos? It all makes sense. Yep. It'll all make sense if you play the game. And that axe is fantastic. This is the game's wonderful. Play uh play God of War on the PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5 if you have one. It is fantastic. Um do, 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 do. Eric says, don't have to say it on stream. I'm going to. Not the first part, but I'll say this. Uh he says, multiplayer trailer. Late September release date for the returning college dorm crowds. Big December map updates to boost Game Pass subscription for the holidays. Went a little deeper there with the map releases. Those maps would have to be free with it being a free to play. Oh, absolutely. They will be. Yep. So. But the qu- that, then the question is, are they new? Or are they just fucking rehashes of the same shit? I'm going to be pissed. But ladies and gentlemen, you can find out everything that happens with us, twitch.tv forward slash HCS Pro Talk over here, June 13th, 2021 to Sunday. You can join us at 1130 a.m. Central. We'll have a little pre-show. We'll lead right into the event. You can watch it with us live. You can react with us live. (sighs) Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? And then uh, Oren... Tetra of Podcast of All will be joining us as well. So it'll be a good time. Will, is there anything you want to add before we move on to the regular news? Nope. Good. Then it's time for the regular news. <laughs> Halo Gear Pride Series. This is by Halo Gear. Right in time for June. Show your support with a brand new limited edition Halo Pride collection. All available right now in the Xbox Gear Shop. And. Oh, he's getting up. Where are you going? This was not planned. He thought he picked something up. Ugh. He's carrying it in his hand. He's back. I got some of the stickers. He's got stickers that were on there, and I haven't opened this up yet. So I got three stickers, uh, the pride ones, because I thought they looked like genuinely really really fucking cool. Um. So yeah, that one, which is just the straight up Halo logo. It's gonna be know. hard to see on camera, but yeah. Halo logo. You have this one with, like, the rainbow thing there. And then you have the Master Chief helmet with the... Oh, that's cool. Isn't that fucking neat? It's got all the different... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hold them close to the camera, too, but... Oh. Audio, people. Sorry, go check out the VOD. Yeah, check out the fucking VOD. Damn it. I'll just hold them up quick. All right, I'll all right. Quick. I'm breaking up the show again. I know, I'm supposed but to be in that one. Be cool. But where I held it. I don't know if they can hear you. Fuck it, I don't care. You're you saying they're pretty me? cool? A lot. <laughs> He's going to restate what I'm saying. This is pretty cool. This is very cool. It's pretty neat. cool. I'm pretty neat. Pretty neat. I need that. I'm pretty neat. Um, so, yeah, go buy them. And then also, uh, they have shirts and shit, and they're really fucking cool. Buy it up. And then the last piece of regular news, the Mission Debrief 20 for 20 teaser trailer by Podcast Evolved. Coming soon, the Mission Debrief crew is back with its brand new series, 20 for 20. So we're kicking off their return with a bang. Enjoy. Um, Maddie says, I got that 20th anniversary Halo shirt, but returned it. It was way too gaudy for me. It is. I, I got it too. It's upstairs. I, I think I'm going to wear it during the E3 show. Um, but yes, Maddie, it is. 
so much so that it has like a gold, um, like a glittery vinyl on it, but it's like the glitter is everywhere on the shirt. It's got like a gold, a gold fucking Ugh. sprinkle to it. Oh my God. It's crazy. It's too much. It is too much. Um, but yeah, I'll probably wear it during the E3 stream. That's it for the regular news. Ah. Cyber kind of the games. Watch call of duty league. Stage four land is set. This is by the Call of Duty League. The road to Stage 4 Major has nearly ended, meaning we are about to have our fourth CDL Major tournament and our first on LAN. Over the course of four days, June 17th through the 20th, all 12 teams will battle it out for the share of a $500,000 prize pool. I'm and curious because... I believe it's the Dallas Home Series, BT Dubs. Being on LAN, you know, sometimes... Minnesota is winning it. No, probably not. <laughs> but, you know, like... When someone quick peeks a corner, sometimes on uh, internet, whatever they're whatever they're using, yeah, that person gets a little Le- peeker's advantage. Latency. I'm curious if LAN changes some things with how tight of angles these guys hold. And these guys have not played on LAN yet, so this is going to be and it's also be you, fun. You see a lot of times, like when I'm watching on YouTube, like they they're shooting someone as they're running away, but they just hold the same spot and they get the kill, even though the body's not there anymore. How much is that going to change being on land? Minnesota is winning the event. Yeah. London Royal Ravens are winning the event. The Seattle Surge. This oh god. <laughs> Octane rooting for you, bud. No, I don't know. It's going to be it'll be fun to watch. It'll be very fun to watch. I don't think spectators are allowed. I don't think so. From what I heard, no. Okay. But yeah, it's the if I'm not mistaken, it is the Dallas um it is the Dallas home series that event so it should be in dallas maddie says legion has my vote um no and then i will say maddie your subliners man they have been doing very well so i would love to see them bring a fight to atlanta like they are looking good so I really hope they're able to keep that momentum. Uh, Clay was able to take down his old teammates in Dallas. So I really, good luck to them, man. I know they're your team. I'm, I'm loving what they're doing. Um, so yeah, I liked Asim when he was on the rocker. So good luck to you guys. Um, it says you and me both, fingers crossed. Yes, fingers crossed. Yay! Roster recap. <laughs> You're reading them, though. That's fine. I'll gladly. The CDL roster recap. Because I've gotten team names, I've gotten team compositions wrong before. And as of right now, these are what they are. So this is what should be leading into the Dallas home series. The Atlanta phase, Simp, Abazi, Celia, uh, Celium, and Arcides. Nothing changed. Dallas Empire, Crim6, Illy, Shotzi, and Vivid. Optic Chicago, Scump, Formal, Dashy, and Envoy. Nothing's changed. New York Subliners, Clayster, Mac, Asim, and Hydra. The Minnesota Rocker, Priesta, Attach, Standy, and Major Maniac. The Seattle Surge, Octane, Gunless, Pristini, and Classic. The LA Thieves, I won't screw this up. Draza, Kenny, TJ Haley, and Venom. Is it Holly? I don't fucking know. Okay. I think it's Holly. TJ Holly. London Royal Ravens. Shawnee, Paul X, Afro, and Alex. The Toronto Ultra. Cami, Kleenex, Bance, and Insight. The Los Angeles Gorillas. Silly, Assault, Apathy, and Cheen. The Florida Mutineers. Skies, Neptune, Awakening, and Havoc. And finally, the Paris Legion and Aqua, Scraps, Temp, and Zaptius. There is your roster recap. And I believe this is the current standings from top to bottom. That would make sense to me. We talked about E3 for a good amount of time. The E3 2021 schedule, for the most part, is 
published over at e3expo.com. You can check out the link in the Google Doc the show notes of the show. Exclamation point show notes chat. And finally, Valorant celebrates its first year. This is by Valorant. And they have a lot of events going on, including the night market is back. I don't know if it's still on. Is it still on? It I might be still on. I don't know. I had some shit in there. Uh, no, no, that wasn't great either. No. They're doing a gift back bundle. So you can go on their Twitter and they have, uh, or I even think it's a post. You can vote for what you would like to see in this bundle for skins. The bundle will be discounted. And if you buy the bundle, money goes to charity. So that's pretty cool. I want the Oni shit. I have the Oni Phantom right now. It's so good. It's one of the, it's probably the best looking skin in the game. Why does everybody, yeah, everybody wants to pick it up. I just love the, the white and the blue. And, like, you have, like, the thing in the middle. The little skull. It looks so good. Wait, no. Oh, is that the Oni? I thought the Oni was the white and the blue, the futuristic-looking one. Am I wrong? I could be very well wrong here. Um, But you have additional player cards, including the Pride set that are released as well. You can go online and find the codes to everything. Uh, there's a community battle pass. We can earn additional rewards. There's WW Fest. There's a year one event pass. There's a squad boost. If you play with members in a squad, you get an XP boost. There is an episode three live stream that's going to be taking place. There's changes to account leveling. A new agent coming soon. Oh, is that, that's the only, okay, I'm an idiot. I'm but thinking it, of, there is like white, there's different variants. So, um, different no, colors. What am I, what am I fucking thinking of? It's the futuristic white, like, or grayish looking gun with like oh. the blue fucking like orb thing in the middle. Ion? Is it Ion? Yeah, what is that? This? Yeah. The Ion, yeah. It is Ion. That's what I like. I like the Ion shit. I think that's the best looking skin in the game. I really like it. I really do. Um, yeah, and then also the, probably the weirdest and biggest announcement, which was technically confirmed a long time ago, Valorant in its full entirety, not a dumbed down version, but the full blown Valorant is coming to mobile. I don't know how. I don't fucking know either, but they're going to do it. With so, all like the button combos or like not even combos, but like dude. pull out your ability and then you can go like left or underhand or, you know, I don't know. All I know is that they did technically make in this, like it is a, it's a smaller version, but they did bring league of legends to mobile. Sure. Like league of legends is on mobile. Um, Justin says phones on fire. Jesus Christ. I, I don't know. I don't know how they're fucking doing it, but I, I, like I said, this was basically confirmed a while ago, but they came out and said that, yeah, we're, it's, we're working on it. So there's that. That's it for Cod and Other Games Watch, which means it's time for Will's Adventures with the Nailovers and Other Games too. Will, what'd you play last week? Um, all I had was some time for some Valorant games. Val or Ant? Yep. I am in the epilogue of the Battle Pass. How? So, okay. So we know how long it takes, which is a long time, to get to 50. Yeah. How does the epilogue work out? It's so so far. It's like it's only like tw- it's the same. It's like twenty seven thousand XP per. So is twenty th- is twenty seven thousand like from forty nine to fifty or like from one to two? Like how does I it believe, vary there? So, I didn't pay complete attention. Do you feel like you're getting it quickly or no? Yeah. So like. Okay. Everything from like 35, as far as I know, everything from like 35 up has been like 29,000 XP per okay per battle pass spot. Okay. So it's not like astronomically more. It's not exponential like Halo 5. Where, oh, God. You know, for XP, but it does. I think it increases little by little. Like the last one might be like 30 or 40 XP, 40,000. Eric asks, are you thinking of something from OniFans.com? Oh, no. No. But I do think the Oni skins, right? Ion. Ion. I think the Ion skins in Valorant are really fucking neat. So I played some Valorant. Yes. And then, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about how much I'm supposed to talk about it, but uh, 
So, you, you oh, for the record here, in the show notes, he literally only has Friday night yeah, yeah, yeah. in this. So, earlier last week, okay, I got an email. Email. Um. Because I, I I mentioned on our Discord that I auditioned for some voice acting. Oh, role. did you get it? Well, I got an email that they wanted me to try for another role because when I made my like audition tape, I was like William Boyer reading for the part of, and then I did the voice because he was like a a close quarter combat guy. Yeah, and they're like, well, we actually your normal speaking voice was really close to what we were expecting for this other character. Would you mind reading for that? Okay. So I went into like perfection mode on Friday night. I spent like four to five hours recording two lines. Jesus Christ. And when I say two lines, like one was like a long kind of speech, but one like paragraph of text. And the other one involved uh, some other stuff. We'll get to it. But yeah, uh, I found out Saturday that I got the part. Hey! So. Claps in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you congratulate Will. I'm going to be... All, all that was stated was it's a Halo Infinite audio drama. That's all I know right now. A Halo Infinite audio drama. Yep. I have the full script in hand, but obviously can't speak about it. Well, he'll give me all the deets later. <laughs> and if you don't, I'll fucking kick your ass no, out. No, I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna uh, keep you in the dark until it's Fuck out. you. Fuck you. Partnership my ass. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, Voodoo Man? The man, the myth, the legend, Martin Ohms in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. BS, congratulations, Will. That's fucking rad. You know what this reminds me of then? Hmm. This reminds me of uh Hunt the Truth. Yeah. Yeah. When it bit. was, yeah. A little bit. A little, little bit. A little bit, Will. A little, little bit. A little bit. Reminds me of Hunt the Truth. There you go. And if it's anything like that, I'm in. I like it. What's? Can you say what your character's name is? I will not yet. Okay. I don't know how much. I like, they didn't have me sign like an NDA or anything, but it is a no, project in the it. works. Yeah, I want to yeah. keep it on. Yeah, I on, hear you. On, I don't want to give away anything. I hear you. Can't quite yet. Um, I'm very curious to hear about Will's adventure thoughts on the Baku race. Oh God. Oh man. Ooh. It was okay. Yeah. We'll get into that. Cause I watched Ooh. the replay. Yeah. Um, it was crazy. It was fucking um, insane. In Voodoo man. I, I think I, I thought I posted in your discord, but I haven't been around uh, for the races and whatnot lately. I apologize. I had a lot going on. Um, but yeah, the Baku race, uh, I had to mow my lawn. Sunday morning, so I wasn't able to watch, but I was keeping up on Twitter the entire time. I'm so curious on what made Verstappen go wibbly wobbly and then out at in, the end. Yeah, like in the sprint. Yeah, like what what caused him at the end to crash? It, was it a lockup or was it because what it was his it was his left front tire right? It was left rear tire popped. Oh wow, that's okay. That's what did it. Uh, if anyone wants some good audio drama recommendations, I'll drop a bunch in Discord tonight. Well, there you go. Thanks, Justin. Um, his left rear tire popped. I thought it had to do with his front left. Yep. Hamilton Hamilton flying off on the restart. Insane. Makes, makes sense because his tires were cold. They're not warmed properly or whatever. Just insane, though. He went from two to not finishing. And... um. Oh, I'm spaced spa- on I his mean, name. he finished, but... Perez, right? Or no? Perez, yeah. Checo? The one who won. Yeah. Perez. Sergio Perez. Sergio Perez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Red Bull. The way he, like, on the restart, just, like, jetted off towards him to pinch him off and then kept. It was, uh. So. It was such a, it was a, it was an exciting race for sure. It was, yeah, it's definitely the most exciting race of the year. Uh, In terms of just absolute fuckery that happened in that race. The fact that Verstappen was easily going to win. Yeah. And then no, uh, that did not happen. Then with the red flag and the restart, they're like, we're going to do a rolling restart. So everybody line back on up. And like, if we'll go for two laps, like, Oh shit. So anybody can win this fucking thing now. Okay. So much so that 
Sergio won. Congratulations to Checo, by the way. That's fantastic. Love him. Love him. He won. Second went to uh, Sebastian Vettel, yep. who was a multiple world champion a while, like a long time ago. But that I think that's what the first the first points, right? The first points of the year, I think, for, for Aston Martin. Aston Martin, I think so. Yeah, first podium for the year for Aston Martin. Like, what? And you had Pierre Gasly. Yeah, Gasly fucking from Alpha Tauri getting in there at third. He's he's love him of, too. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. Right yes, now. he was just done dirty by Red Bull, man, and he fucking he oh, has it out for him. Yeah, he's so one great. of my he's like one of my favorite like mid Packers right now. Oh yeah, and he's he's that type of like Cinderella story right now where he wants to fight back up and get to that Red Bull spot because yeah. Alpha Tauri is the child to Red Bull. So it's a sister to, Ch- uh, to Red Bull. Um, first podium ever for us. Yeah. Because they just came, they just came in or back, whatever, but yes, first podium ever for Red Bull. I mean, for Aston Martin, uh, we love to see it. Glad to see you guys. It was, ins- oh, yeah. it was insane. And also I want to toot my own goddamn horn here for a second. So oh, give, no. give me a moment. Here give me a moment. Here we go. I'm going to log into the, uh, no, I don't, I'm going to log into the F1 fantasy website here real quick and just go to the, uh, go to the Latifi league here. Um, I just want to, just want to go to, uh, to this real quick, you know, um, just give me a second. We have, we have voodoo's lounge fantasy and, uh, oh, that's me in uh fifth place right now. Huh? Isn't that something? So where's, where's Martin? Oh, oh, no. Martin's in seventh. Josh said he was man, coming for him. Man, Martin in seventh place. How many races are left? A lot. <laughs> I think I think we have a triple header coming up, too. Like, back-to-back-to-back weeks. It could change very easily. It could, but I am taking this moment right now. And Buddha says that Hamilton's screwing up there cost me a ton. I know, I know. But Perez is on my my squad. I may have Verstappen as well, so obviously that didn't work out so well. Oh no, it d- it d- I just have Perez, and I have Gasly as well, so that worked out in my favor. There you go. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in four in uh, fifth place over here <laughs> in, in F one fantasy first year, by the way. Hey, what's up? Uh, going to g- going up against the veteran here in uh, Voodoo Man Martin Holmes in seventh currently. So. I'll take this victory lap. No pun intended. <laughs> Do I need to get it like a joke button? There you go. Yeah. But I got to toot my own horn because I know it's not going to last. I know it's not going to last. Uh, having those two definitely helped. Awesome. Sorry to derail. No, you're fine, man. Voodoo. It was, it was a great, it was a phenomenal race. And we, we had gotten flack before about talking about formula one on the show, but it's our show. Who gives a shit. Um, he says back to halo. Would you guys want to see another grassroots cup? Yeah. Martin, I love how you had to have thought we'd say yes. Like you couldn't have sat there and thought to yourself, I wonder if they'll say no to having another grassroots cup. Will, do you want another grassroots cup? Well, you know, I think we've just had enough tournaments around Halo. The I recently. thought the send off was it. <laughs> we were just done. We were going to take a break. Just, just go away for a little bit. Get away from Halo, but no, Mark got to come back in. No, just kidding. Absolutely, of course, of course. yes. Please, Martin, please. Uh, what would you want to see from it? You got eight three four three employees. Go, go. Wait, are we saying what would you want to see from it, or who would you want to see from it? I think he's saying what. Because what I would love to see is another spring fling type event where all the halos are represented in a grassroots cup. Who, what, et cetera, have fun. I loved the idea. I loved the idea of uh, the spring fling. Um, I would say, a, uh, I would say like a, why the fuck am I blanking out on the name of the of the fun mini game tournament that they did? Paint Row Raid. Thank you. I'd like I I would like to see something like that, but at the same time, 
I, I do personally, I want to see the more, uh, I want to see the three, four, three employees going more like competitive in it. So I want, I want the traditional four V four. And that's why I think I want to see another spring fling type event where all the halos are represented because you can see where people shine. It, it throws wrenches into, in, into like potential placings because what a team could do really well on one game and then really poorly on another. That's, that's what I want to see in terms of employees. Well, we got to have wait, Unishek. I think he's saying like, we have the floor with eight, three, four, three employees right now. We have the, f- wait, like what? we're pitching a tournament to eight, three, four, three employees. Is that, is that what I'm getting? I don't fucking know. Or are we saying we have eight, are eight, three, four, three employees competing in this? Oh, I you got, got it. Okay. We're we pitching have- it to eight, three, four, three employees. Who are the three? Who are the eight? Tashi. Well, it doesn't matter. We just, just say. I like, want to know who I'm pitching to <laughs> so I can cater to them. You can't say. Tashi, you beautiful son of a bitch. <laughs> let's listen to me. <laughs> oh, man. I know, you, I know you're no, there. I, I know Div's there. All right. If I'm Muggsy. I know you're there, too. Listen to me. We've been here. All right. You can trust us. Wes, we interviewed you. Okay. We asked about your dog. Do you want me to just push the mute button? (laughs) (laughs) I can do that. Uh, Let's say they all want to play spring fling format. What kind of other players you want to see fill it out? I want Kelly in there. Okay, so came out of five. Yes, because he's back. I want him in there. Um, vetoed. Yes. Can I get Trunks in there? Trunks. Yep. Trunks. Jeff. Jeff needs a time in the spotlight. Jeff deserves it. It's a fucking grassroots partner for fuck's sake. He deserves it. Um, real life Spartan in there. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. One hundred seventeen percent. Get it in there. I like Jen. Get Jen in there. Lady Echidna. We need some more female representation. Who else we got? Um, um, you can get Queen in there if you queen, want to. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Oath, recent grassroots partner too. Oh, what a cutie! Veronica. Veronica, yeah. Oh, this is fun. How many teams are we having here? Yeah, we're just, we're just gonna throw on. everybody out there. <laughs> How many teams we got? Um, how should the teams be balanced? Have fun. I'm just curious to hear your thoughts and ideas. Wonder Boy's got to play. I want Wonder Boy Ooh, to play. I want Golden Boy. And Golden Boy? And Walshy. Well, now, now you're bringing in pro <laughs> talent here. <You're> crossing <laughs> the, the reason line. why. You're crossing the line. Hold on. Hold on. The reason why. Think if it was a spring fling BTB tournament. Why are you going with the BTB? Because you got to have you the rematch. You said you wanted competitive before. Competitive BTB. You got to have the rematch between Golden Boy, Team Golden Boy and Team Walsh. No, no, we don't need that. I need that. I mean, it was fun, but if we're doing a competition, like an, an actual tournament, so not the BTB is the way for me. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So, v, uh, Voodoo, if I was to go, yeah, I'm go, yes, we'll say that. So, we'll say, but I mean, I don't want, if I say one female player per team, that sounds sexist to me because they, like everybody varies in skill, male or female, it doesn't fucking matter. But I would say it, to keep it generalized, again, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to be an asshole. Okay. Because I feel like anything that I'm going to say right now could be taken in the wrong context. I want equal representation amongst every team. Let me, I need to say that because it's true. I need e- equal representation with every team, but it doesn't necessarily mean that only one female player per team, like, you know, so in terms of skill set, if we have professional talent competing, one professional per team, I think that is a given. Sure. Because. So are we getting back towards kind of like the draft thing we did with sure. grassroots before? Sure, but it would be more of a, it'd be more of like a pool, like you would have pools that you draft from. So like you'd have a pro player pool, a content creator pool, maybe a caster pool, and a three four three talent pool. Sure, or it can be random, like like when the the community tournament you played in. Right, but if we're, it, but like I said, if we're gonna have a one pro player per team, then we can't have it all be random. 
Right, right, but that, but the one you played in, they literally, that's what they did. They yeah. Three, four, three employee per team. So fuck it. I just, it's the same format then. Yes. <laughs> With, yeah, but the, Spring the, Fling. The content creators. Yes. So you have, you have professionals. So pro players, a pool of those, a pool of content creators slash grassroots partners. Then you have a pool of uh, casters. Because I think it'd be cool to have like a mixture of casting talent on there too. Mm-hmm. Because they're just funny and they're just they know how to they, they know how to communicate well. And then you have the three four three pool. The employees of three four three. Would a draft be more appealing? I th- think you said that before we were talking about it, maybe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Just glad to get a good discussion topic going. Uh, I guess stay tuned. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. I'm trying to think of other Halo guys that would should be in there. Well, I mean, you, you have all the grassroots partners if they want to sign up but i i just i i'd like to see like potentially players who didn't compete or weren't able to compete in the last one be able to get their chance this time sure so like you said a vetoed uh trunks um real life spartan like all these folks that didn't have the opportunity before because they just weren't involved or they weren't a grassroots partner whatever it may be have their opportunity now that's what i'd like to see Get some fresh, get some fresh blood in there. Um, but yeah, and I think it'd be really cool to get uh, again, like, like uh, the the pro the pro players as well. Bring that competitiveness to it as well, but also kind of you know they can. They don't have to. They can loosen up a little bit because it's it's more of a for fun thing. So. Yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Awesome. God, I want to see that now. Man. And I would, re- like I said, I'd love to see it in a spring fling format where every Halo is represented. Because you have players who pop off on certain titles. I just think it'd be really fucking cool to see that. So. All right. Well, I'll quickly run through it. Uh, yeah, would you play this with yes. Josh? Uh, so Holy I, side rail. <laughs> but thank you, Voodoo. That was actually really good. Yes. Martin, that's fantastic. Um, I finished Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction, and I real I I've come to find out that the other three titles so Rift Apart comes out on Friday this week. Yep. But I've come to find out that the other three titles are actually pretty short in comparison. Huh. So who knows if I'll even have time, but I'd love to just run through them. Valorant played a, f- a short session of Val with the boys. Yeah. Um, so I played a little bit of Valorant. It's a good game. I tested out No Man's Sky again because they released another update, updates on updates on updates. And, uh, yeah, it's, the, it, obviously, it's the same game. So I pro- I don't think I'm going to keep playing it. But And then I also bought and did not launch Total War Warhammer 2. Um, I bought it on a deep sale, but I'm excited to give it a shot ahead of the release of Warhammer three because it just, it typically I'm not, I'm not a uh, gamer who enjoys that style of gameplay. Um, but the, the third one has me really excited and I see people stream the second one and it looks, and they have a good time with it. And that's how, that's how I stumble upon some games sometimes is that I see somebody play it and it looks genuinely fun and then I play it and it's either fun or it's not. So, there's that. That's it. Will, let's get into the closing out of the show. Let's get into some shout outs. <laughs> shout out to everyone who joined the community play date. That's Maddie and Dave with the Halo 2 Classic play date. Um, shout out to everyone who followed and subbed during the live show. Thank you so much, Eric, for the gifted sub to Maddie Rums. And then also a shout out to Brokebox for the follow. Thank you so much. Happy belated birthday to K Mattify. So, Kelly, happy belated birthday to you. Uh, happy birthday today to David Sandman, photographer extraordinaire. Happy birthday to you, sir. Really looking forward to hope, hopefully seeing you at infinite events. I think you absolutely deserve the opportunity. The work you do is fantastic. I love the concert shots and the and the recent car posts that you've been doing on your Twitter as well. So good shit. And then also to our partners in Podcast Evolve. Shout out to you guys and your seven 
year anniversary today. Claps in the chat. That is so fucking rad. So congratulations to you guys. Looking forward to so much more. Love the partnership that we have. Literally after this episode, we're going to we're gonna record the Inside HCS for May. So we can send that to you guys. You can put it on the show. But yeah, that's it for the shout outs. Community creations. Halo memes every day. Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Halo memes. Clips of the week number 108 by High Tech Redneck. And if you want daily clips, go check her out on Twitter where she posts those as well. The state of Halo Comedy Evolved on MCC post season seven flight. This is by Snowy. If you want an in depth comparison there, check out that YouTube video. And finally, the VOD. For the Halo Runs Easy Relay Race 2021 by Halo Races. Yo! Eric with the gifted sub to Voodoo Man. The man Martin himself. Thank you so much, Eric, for the gifted sub to Martin. And another. Woo! (laughs) Thank you so much, man. Greatly appreciated. Seriously. Um. Yeah. If you have not seen... If you guys want to see some awesome, I, I know we talk about competitive Halo on the show. That's kind of the main, the main point. But uh, I mentioned it in the Discord that if you want a different uh, side of competitive Halo, go watch that speed running VOD. They do an event every year. They're going to do a legendary race uh, as well. But this was a this was an easy relay race. All the mainline Halo titles, um, back to back to back to back to back. And it was really, really fun to watch. You get to see some really cool uh, strategies that take place. There's a, there was a Warden Eternal Halo 5, uh, like, I, I guess you could say glitch or strategy where you hug a rock and he smashes you and you fly straight up and then you, you ground pound into a, into a separate area, skipping an entire section without having to fight him, which is really fucking cool. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much shit. So many little things to speed up your gameplay in that. So please go watch that. Uh, there's a Pelican skip uh, on Sierra 117 at the beginning of Halo 3. Well, at the end of the mission, but at the beginning of the game. And it's there's so many cool things. So please check out that VOD if you haven't already. It's in the Google Doc at the show notes of the show. And, it's, uh, and to Halo Races, thank you guys so much for what you continue to do. The speed run, uh, it's, it's a long-standing speedrunning community with Halo, and you guys are fantastic. Will, that's all I got for the community creations. Would you mind doing me a solid and plugging the show? Of course. You can find us on your favorite podcast services. Just search for HGS Pro Talk. We're on Spotify, Google, Podbean, and others as well. Pocket Cast. Join the Discord. Join the community dis- community discussion. Link is provided in the Google Doc at the show notes of the show. Join the Xbox Club or Spartan Company. Search for us on your Xbox. We're on social media, in Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Esportspedia. We have our own website, hsprotalk.com, where you can find a link to our merch in the top right corner if you're interested, unlike our friends over at noobcombo.com. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, don't Throw forget Podcast shade. Evolved. If you want lore, missions, books, blocks, and top Halo news stories, go check out halopodcast.com. You're home for Halo. And make sure to congratulate them on seven motherfucking years. Yes. We'll be there soon. Incredible. Incredible. I mean, the thing is, though. Four years. We're always going to be behind them at this point. Nah, we'll just, we'll make them stop. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Okay. Hey, guys, can you, like, postpone your next show four years? Four years. Four years. (laughs) They'll be right there. We can celebrate together then. (laughs) Just kidding. That's all I got. That's all I got, Josh. Will. Thank you so much, as always, for reading through those. Um, Has some good discussions this week. But, Will, I want you to ask me. What do we have on the next episode? Oh, it's been so long. We have our thoughts on the Microsoft and Bethesda showcase. So stay tuned for all that. It's going to be a fun time. Can't fucking It's literally, we're going to have the live react on, what's on Sunday? Sunday, yep. And we're we're recording Monday. Yes, we have. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Record, bang. record. <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> uh, shows are out. We have we have the live watch along and reaction on Sunday afternoon. We have the podcast evolved post-conference show in that late afternoon. 
And then that Monday evening, we have our traditional show. It's yeah. going to be content galore. It's a content extravaganza! Bonanza! You're never going to let that go. I love it so much. Well, you're the one that added Bonanza to it. And I'm like, oh, my God, you made a great point. You have to add Bonanza to it. Oh, we didn't <laughs> have to. Oh, we, we did. did. We did. We absolutely did. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in live or listening to the audio version or watching the VOD wherever you happen to consume the show. Thank you so much. This has been episode 186. Um, I also, I, I want to end on two things. A couple sentimental notes uh, that aren't necessarily going to sound sentimental, but bear with me. Um, I just want to say, if you do enjoy what we do, or hell, if you don't enjoy what we do, leave a review on iTunes, right? I love reading them regardless, and it helps us with feedback. And I'm also going to say this. If you guys tweet at us, DM us, whatever it is, I read them all the time, okay? And I love seeing what you guys have to say, good or negative, doesn't matter to me. But thank you all so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. I say it every week, but I truly, truly mean it. We wouldn't be doing this without you guys. We love you guys being here, consuming however you do. And we know that it's been a long time coming for Infinite. We completely understand that. There's There's been a lot of ruts. There's been a lot of things that we've had to get through. But if there's one thing, and we talk about it all the time, there's one thing that gets us through these scenarios, it's the community overall. The competitive community continues to put on events every single week. It doesn't matter if there aren't official tournaments taking place. You guys are the foundation of how this ship sails and without you guys that ship would have sunk a long fucking time ago so to everybody putting on tournaments to everybody watching the tournaments to everybody competing in the tournaments to everyone behind the scenes to everyone who listens and watches the show to everyone that just engages with the community to everybody that plays Halo thank you Sunday is going to be a very big day we all hope it is we all expect it to be. But if there's one thing I'm going to say, please keep your expectations in check. Do not be an asshole online if it's not what you expected it to be. Please. What was that? Oh, you're fine. Oh, sorry. Okay. Keep going. So, please. Keep your expectations in check. Be excited with everyone and just enjoy it for what it's going to be. Don't be an asshole online. We can't wait to see what we're going to see, regardless of what is being shown. And we hope you're excited too. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week. We'll catch you on Sunday. But until then, bye-bye! Thank you, Sasquatch. Thank you so much for the four-month resub. Woo!